So I've been using the Sony a7 IV for about a year now and the FX3 for about two years. And beyond some of the more common settings that you might see in reviews, there are also a handful of uncommon settings that I've discovered that aren't really talked about. So I thought I'd mention those today. Hey, what's happening everyone? My name is Ryan and today I'm gonna show you five uncommon but very useful settings that I use on my Sony cameras. Let's get into it. Now, some of these settings you may have heard of before, and there might be some that you haven't heard of yet, but either way, I thought I would compile all of these settings into one video, and I also made sure to choose settings that are not only uncommon, but also very useful, at least in my opinion. So we're gonna dive right in, but just a couple of things. Number one, we're not sponsored by Sony at all, and number two, Thanks for being here. Okay, so let's dive in. So number one, we have Gamma Display Assist. Now this is definitely one that's been around for a while. However, I actually personally didn't hear about this until not that long ago. So I thought I would add it to the list here. This will allow you to have a bit of a color grade on your footage while still using a log profile. Here I'm using S-Log3. Now I would normally do this through an external monitor where I would import my own LUTs to be able to see what the footage could look like in post while still filming in a log profile, preserving all of the highlights and shadows and things that I want in the image. But you can also do this within your camera. All you have to do is first go to the menu, then go to the yellow briefcase at the bottom and go to display option. I first like to stop at gamma assist display type. And I stop here first because here you'll have a chance to decide whether you want S-Log2, S-Log3, and two HLG options as well. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna choose S-Log3. Then you just head back up to gamma display assist, turn it on, and you're good to go. Now for me personally, I like to switch between more of a color graded look and my log footage whenever I'm shooting and I like to have the ability to switch back and forth quickly. So I've saved this to a function button here. What's number two? Number two. All right, so number two is overheating. The a7 IV has actually been notorious for overheating. You might hear this a lot online when people are doing reviews on the camera. There is like a governor, so to speak, where it will shut down your camera if it overheats to help the camera cool down. Now there's a way to bypass this, and here's how you do that here. First you go to the yellow suitcase and then select power setting option. From there you just go to auto power off temp and you set that to high. Now from here you're gonna get a prompt and it's gonna say the temperature of the device may rise to prioritize recording time. And then it'll ask you if you'd like to save these settings. Now I've never personally had any heat issues when using this for long periods of time when I've had this setting set to high. I actually just tested this out recently where I have the camera just pointing at me doing all the research for this video and it was on it for for a very long time, almost to the point where it took the entire card and it felt hot, but not too hot and it didn't damage the camera at all. Also in my research, I did find that a lot of the YouTubers that were reviewing this, a lot of people online would say that they would turn this on and didn't have any heat issues, but I would maybe suggest just give this a test run and see how it works out for you. After this, you just click okay and you're good to go. Hey, future Ryan here at a hotel. My wife and kids and I are out celebrating Mother's Day weekend. But anyway, I was watching the playback and I realized I forgot to mention a couple of things. What I'm talking about is very A7 IV specific. However, you could change these settings on a lot of the different Sony cameras like the FX3, um, the A6500 I think does this as well. But I personally tested this on the A7 IV, which is what I'm using right now. Also, another thing I wanted to mention is what kind of situation would you use this feature for. For me personally, this is when I would be using my a7 IV as a B camera or a C camera in an interview. Interviews usually take a lot longer than 15 to 20 minutes, which is when you would get the prompt to shut down your a7 IV or your Sony camera so that it can cool down. So I would just set this to high and get a much longer lifespan out of it for those interviews. I would also use this if I was doing a product shoot and it was taking hours and I was using this camera specifically or I'm shooting behind the scenes footage and I just need my Sony camera to stay on longer, then I would set this to high. Again, I only tested this on my a7 IV. I haven't tested it on any of the other Sony cameras, not even my FX3 because it has a fan in it. So it stays cool. But I just thought I would add this little bit in there just in case you were using a different Sony camera and you tried this out. So just go ahead and test it out for yourself. Maybe do a little bit more research and see how it works for you. All right, number three, a brighter LCD screen. Now you've probably heard me say many times if you've been following the channel for some time that it is super frustrating to just go out and film on this LCD screen outside with full sun. It's just, it, you just can't do it. It's, it's impossible. But on the contrary, 
now you can. As a matter of fact, I don't know how long this feature has been around, but I did just discover this and it's kind of been a game changer for me. So here's how to do it. First, again, you go into the yellow briefcase, <laughs> then head on over to finder slash monitor. From there, you just go down to monitor brightness. And from here is where you can increase or decrease the brightness of your LCD screen. Now, the way to do that is you go to the negative sign to dim your display and to the positive sign to increase the display. It's pretty self-explanatory. And below that, you have this little meter here that helps you to see what your grays, your whites, your blacks, and even your colors will look like after making these changes. However, there is another way to increase the brightness of your display. You just go up to brightness setup where it says it's set to manual and set that to sunny weather. Now this makes your LCD screen significantly brighter, which kind of helps when you're outside. It, it works pretty well. However, for me personally, it can throw me off when I'm filming indoors and especially with controlled lighting. It makes me feel like my image is a little bit too bright when maybe it's not. So I like to switch this off whenever I'm filming indoors. And a way for me to do that quickly without having to go through all these settings again is to set it to another function button. Now this next one is a little bit extensive, but I'll try to get through it quickly. And that is save settings. Now first, before you do this, make sure that you have an SD card that you're not currently using and make sure that it's formatted and fresh so that you can add your settings to that. You'll see why in a second. Okay, so the first thing is you want to go to your menu and head down to the yellow briefcase, then select reset slash save settings. After that, select save slash load settings, and there's where you would save your settings over to your SD card. Give it a name that you'll remember, and click save. One more thing I would recommend is to label your SD card if you're looking to save this particular setting and have a physical copy of it. However, there is another way that you could do this and that is to plug in your SD card to your computer and save it onto your hard drive or desktop. Now this is gonna make it a lot easier if you wanted to reload those settings onto your camera and moving on to number five and that is my menu. Now this is one that I think that is more common. However, I thought I would add it to this list because there are quite a few people that don't know this particular setting, at least I didn't for a long time. This function will allow you to save all the settings that you probably use most often, or even some of the ones that you don't use often and you can't remember where they are in the menu. This is gonna allow you to create your own customized menu for quick and easy access. So here's how to do it. First, you go to the star icon, different this time. Then you go to my menu setting, then go to add item, after that, just choose the item that you want to add and select the folder you would like to add it to. You could also delete and sort all of these items in pages from this menu as well. This is also a great way for me to share my Sony settings if I have a second shooter with the same camera. It's just a quick way for me to make sure all of our settings are matched up and synced up so that it makes it easier for me in post. In the end, these are all just the settings that I thought might be most useful and might be a little more uncommon. However, I would just encourage you to explore this menu more because there's always something to learn with these Sony cameras and just see what settings work best for you. Well, that's going to do it for me, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this quick video. If you like this video or you learned something, please click the like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.